Most people in life are looking for how to make a life worth living and a return worth having. And in order to do that, we must be willing to regard not only our rights in America, but other people's rights. The challenge that many, many people have, especially if they're part of the religious right, is accepting that fact. You see, when you regard your rights, it means that you're supposed to regard someone else's rights. So if you make this marvel to the decision to change your hairstyle, then it means that you're going to allow someone else to change their hairstyle. And if you make the decision that you're tired of dealing with the clothing and the fashion you've been wearing, and that the fashion industry has shifted and we've got different ideas and different looks coming out, then you have the right to change your fashion. You can take all your clothes and give them goodwill, or like my friend did, you can give all your clothes to some moronic sheriff and he can place them all over the community to see if someone can find them because he knows you and loves you and you can produce a new look but if you do that it means that other people have the right to change out their clothes but here's where the problem begins the problem begins that I have my rights but I have your rights too I have the right to my look my hairstyle, my clothing, my sizing choices of my clothes, of whether I want a tight-fitting, really hot outfit, or whether I want a relaxed-fitting, comfortable, kind of fluid-flowing outfit. And I think men and women are pretty much the same about that. I just don't know the lingo of that industry to know how to describe that. I mean, let's face it. we got a lot of brothers who wear huge pants that are falling down because they think that to get a successful girl, they need to have their britches underneath their ass and nowadays, on the other side too, dropping their britches or their waistline below their dicks and their underpants. Thank God they're in underpants today. And I'm sure that works for somebody, but most of the professional women that I know that make a serious living, you know, 100000 or more, they're not into that. Now, at the same time, we have women who have a lot more on their bodies to love than others. They might be 200 to 400 pounders. What I know about some women who are overweight is that when they put their clothes on well, when they allow a little bit of flow, they can look great. What I know about men is that there's all types of men. And some men like a little bit more cushion for the pushing. Other men say, I can't do that. It's not because I don't like that. It's just I have different preferences. And I need a girl that's lean for me so that I don't get hurt in the work of it. Now, I can be as clear and succinct in what I'm talking about, and a young person might not know that language or that whereabouts because maybe they didn't listen to the Richard Pryor tape or maybe they didn't watch some late-night comedy or whatnot. But what I'm talking about is rights. I have the right on my behalf, on my version, at this moment in time, before I've done any more growing in spirituality or faith, to speak the way I need to speak, to get people to hear me, to get you to listen, to get you to go, whoa, I don't want to listen, or to get to go, okay, I get you, and you're right. You see, rights are something that belong solely, singly, and individually to, quite simply, the individual. You see, the right that I have to me belongs to me. But the right that you have to you doesn't belong to you, right? Or does it? And you absolutely know what I'm saying is true. That religious people want to take your rights too. They want their rights, but they want your rights too. As a pagan, I don't believe that. That's why I'm not Christian. It's why I won't tout to be Christian. It doesn't mean I don't love Jesus Christ. I might. But I also love Odin, and I adore the Holy Ghost. I love angels around me, and I know the difference between an angel and a demon. Do you? I highly doubt it. You see, I'm incredibly sensitive, and because I started practicing what some people call Wiccan, or an inappropriate definition of pagan, I can tell the difference in the energies around but I've always been a man of discernment, even before I found my faith, after a loving girl showed me what to do. That woman rocked my world, changed my life, and put me on track to God. And for that alone, for that alone, I'm grateful. 
But at the same time, the one that I love, that returned to my life, many times when I was on my knees in prayer to God, so many times that God has given me over the course of 10 years a constant visual, a constant audio in the real world, not some fictitious spiritual world or some sort of dreamy ideology about how it works in love. Her name, her initials, her life force, her favorite state, her kids' names, you can't fucking believe it. For a long time there, I would go into a room and someone would utter her name or introduce themselves in her name. And then when I was traveling across the Midwest going through literally six states, I would constantly have been hit the minute that I'm thinking about her with her initials in front of me, plastered on the side of a truck or a panel truck or a car. And by far what it proves to me is that God knows where everyone is, every license plate is, every vehicle is, every animal is, has absolutely been proven to me. And that's the magic of God. But your challenge is not you. Your challenge is regarding that people have rights too. Your challenge is acknowledging that a person has a right to their body and their reproductive organ. Their challenge you have is that a person has a right to choose their sexual partners and their life partners and their business partners, their team partners, and their family of choice. A family of choice is often chosen in the traditional way, sort of a form of matrimony today. Whether that's an actual, obligatory, legal marriage relationship, whether that's what's called common law, and that they just live together, and because of the length of time they've been together, they be produce a uh, feeling of marriage. But what I know is that in our society, we have certain ways that we describe people in our life. And some people are really technical, and they'll say, this is my spouse, instead of, that's my wife. And other people will say, this is my husband, or this is my significant other, and they'll describe it however the hell they want to. But that's their right. They might say, this is my living, this is my boyfriend, this is my loving partner, this is my love book. Some girl called me a love bug the other day. I was like, I am not a love bug. I might be a lover, but I am no bug. I didn't appreciate that. Because I barely know her. And I'm not her little love anything. No offense, I play where I play. And I have two conditions today. Do not be playing those lovey-dovey words at me. I'm old enough to be your father. And it's immoral, you see? But those are my rights. And I'm going to tell you my rights when you cross the boundaries. But don't you play it back at me that I don't have the right to tell you what you may and may not call me in a public setting. And don't you tell me on behalf of your company that you have the right to call me sweetheart and honey. You don't. It's immoral today. So what we're talking about today is the truth. That I have a rights to me and you have a rights to you, but you never in this fucking lifetime have the right to me or my body. Have I made myself clear? Because I would never in a million years walk into your home, your vehicle, your room, your friend's house, whatever, and claim I have rights to you. Unless, of course, we are married. But even then, I'm not going to tell you how to wear your hair, necessarily. Unless you look ridiculous with those stupid little uh, I Dream of Genie ponytails on top of your fucking head. Which are totally out of fashion today, unless you're a fashion model demonstrating a fashion clothes on a runway. Because it's not going to help me and you make money today.